Welcome back to the Tariq Elite Radio Show. Glad to have everybody tuning in. Don't forget, man, my lecture tour starts in a couple of weeks. So you guys need to get tickets at um, TariqLive.com. That's where you can get tickets to join me at the Code of Conduct Lecture Tour. The game is going to be hot. The game is going to be real heavy. You're not going to want to miss that. I know a lot of you got your discount advance tickets because the tickets at the door are going to be a little higher, but the tour starts in Philadelphia July 5th, Atlanta July 11th, and Detroit July 18th. So it's going to be on and popping family. A lot of folks calling in. There's a lot of stuff I want to talk about tonight. This just in, from what I understand... There was a black church in South Carolina that just got shot up. I'm just getting details in now. In South Carolina, there was a church that was just shot up. And some people are saying that it could be a suspected white supremacist who shot the church up. Let me look at what it's saying right now. Police have not confirmed... Let me see what it says. Police have not confirmed the person, the location. Hold, wait. A gunman opened fire Wednesday evening at a historic African-American church in downtown Charleston, South Carolina, and was still at large, the police official said. Now, this just happened. Police described the suspect as a 21-year-old white man in a sweatshirt or hoodie and jeans, according to Charleston newspaper. Now, this is developing while I'm talking, family. This is like a, the church was built in 1891. People, black folks, I've been telling you guys, I've been telling black folks, they're going to start blatantly, forget about the cops. The cops, they've set the tone. But these white supremacists, they've been planning on having a religious holy war against us. They were using these code words and Coons wanted to argue with me. They were using these code words like Muslim and all that. They really meant us. They really meant us. They were ready biding their time to start making all out straight up and down religious warfare attacks on us. They're not even leaving it up to the cops now because you see when these cops are gaffling up black people and there was another swimming pool incident over in Ohio this week the same thing basically that, that happened down there in McKinney the same thing happened in Ohio black kids out there swimming they made the kids leave some bullshit reason they came up with making the kids leave and for the, from what I understand they didn't want to give the kids their money back. The mother came up there like, hey, well, can we get our money back? And they didn't want to give the people their money back after they paid to go swimming. So, you know, they were naturally upset. But then the police came and gaffled up all the black kids. I think they broke a little black girl's jaw. She was 12. So these white supremacists are not playing around. These white supremacists are not playing around. All you black folks sat up here marching and praying and forgiving all you church people. And I'm not trying to disparage anybody. But you're dealing with the religion of white supremacy. That's why my new movie, The New Hidden Colors, is called The Religion of White Supremacy. And I got that title from my brother Neely Fuller because he broke it down. White supremacy is the religion. Black folks, you sit up here and forgive these white supremacists for harming you. And after all that forgiving and all that marching and singing and praying for these, these sick psychopaths, they come and shoot your church up. God bless the dead, man. I don't know how I don't know how many people got killed at the church. That's a very unfortunate thing. That's a very unfortunate thing. I hate that happen. But these white supremacists are really letting you know what the deal is. They've always been attacking black churches. It was, these are the same these are the same people that blew up churches in the 1960s with black children in them. And y'all still want to sit around and play this game and march and pray for these people. You don't know what you're dealing with. Now, if you're going to be on that suicidal shit because that's basically what it is. A lot of black people are very suicidal when it comes to dealing with these white supremacists. Well, if you're suicidal, step out of the way and let real people come out here and try to get real solutions on how to deal with these, these 
psychopaths. We're going to take some calls in a minute, man. But there's a lot of stuff that's going on, family. There's a lot of stuff that's going on. You know, a lot of people are still talking about the Rachel Dolezal situation. A lot of people are talking about the Rachel Dolezal situation. But the thing is, we have to understand when something is a distraction. Now, there's a lot of, you know, it's a very interesting story. It's a juicy, hot topic. There was some more stuff that came out, I think, yesterday about this this Rachel Dolezal. She had a, a brother, her a white brother, who they have accused of molesting one of the black adopted children that was in the house. So this story gets juicier and juicier every day. And that's another thing, too. In the movie Hidden Colors 1, no, 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 Hidden Colors 2 and 3, which everybody, if you're listening, you should have that right now. You should go to HiddenColorsFilm.com and get Hidden Colors 1, 2, and 3. But in Hidden Colors 2 and 3, we talked about what happened when a lot of these suspected white supremacists, they are here adopting these black kids. We went really in-depth in it in Hidden Colors 3. We told people what the real deal was. See, black people got this whole thing where it's a, a white person adopt a black kid and you got to praise them because it's like an episode of Different Strokes. You get a rich white benefactor who adopts you and they give you, give you the lap of luxury. It don't really work like that. We broke that down in Hidden Colors 3. We told people that these people be raping these kids, boys and girls, molesting them. Turning, turning them into house servants. I, I, I live in LA and I see little black African nannies all the time at the mall walking around with these white kids. And these were people who used to be, a, they adopted them as kids and now they're running around being nannies or slaves, basically. Y'all got to understand how, how sick some of these white supremacists are, man. Their mentality is deceptive. Black folks are going to have to realize what you're dealing with. When they're going back to the old school thing of shooting up churches, because that's what they've been wanting to do. They've been wanting to get bold like that and shoot up churches. They've been using these code words on your asses for the longest. And black folks want to sit up and argue with you. They've been sitting, I've been, I've been telling folks, and I'm not trying to pat myself on the back, but I've been yelling at the top of my lungs, hey man, these people are using a bunch of code words like Al Sharpton and Muslims and Islam. All of those are code words for black folks. They're going to straight up start attacking us. And I ain't talking about cops because when you look at situations like these swimming pool incidents, you always notice and you notice this in the McKinney video and in this Ohio video that came out of the cops gaffling up black children at these swimming pools, there's always some white vigilante right there assisting the cop. Y'all know down in McKinney was this big fat white guy with a, a, a tan shirt standing over there blocking people from helping the girls and all that. So who was this guy? See, the white supremacist cop, the race soldiers are letting these white supremacist vigilantes assist them. See, they're deputizing these white supremacist civilians out here. And just like in Ohio, there was another, in, the, in that video, the cops were gaffling up the kids and there was some other white dude in some swimming trunks holding somebody up against the wall while the cops are trying to handcuff them. So they're deputizing some of these non-cops, some of these George Zimmermans walking around out here. Black folks are going to have to get serious. You're going to have to protect yourself. You're going to have to get a code of conduct, family. You're going to have to get a code of conduct. All the silly, goofy, dumb shit is going to have to stop. And like I said, we got to understand this because, you know, I was talking a lot about it and I was tweeting a lot about it and making jokes about the whole Rachel Dozial. And that's for those who don't know the Rachel Dozial lady. That's the white lady who was pretending to be black. And from what I understand, this woman might get a reality show. They're talking about giving this woman a television show. I'm not shocked. That's how white supremacy works. You can pretend to be black and get all types of fly shit as a white person that real black people won't get. That's how white supremacy works. But the thing is, with this story of Rachel Dolezal, I noticed something. They're really milking the story. They were, they're really, really, really milking the story. And I'm like, okay, what? 
it's almost like overkill. I mean, why are they really milking this story? This is all you hearing. The whole week, you keep hearing about Rachel Dolezal. She did this. She did that. I mean, they're just going in, going in, going in. Just really overkill. And again, I discussed it on my Ustream show this Sunday, and a lot of people have been talking about it. I tweeted jokes in the whole nine. But this week, I noticed something. There's a situation going down in the Dominican Republic right now that the media is ignoring the hell out of. They're going on and on about this Rachel Dolezal situation, and now that is acting as a smokescreen to what's really happening down in the Dominican Republic right now, which is real serious. In the Dominican Republic right now, 2015, they are having a racial cleanse of dark-skinned black Dominicans under the guise of getting rid of the so-called Haitians. This is what they've done. This is how deceptive they are. And this is how deep the white supremacists get down. Because again, the Dominican Republic, when you look at the Dominican Republic, you see a lot of dark people and, and black people down there. But it's really run by the white supremacist elite. And the U.S. supports the Dominican Republic a lot. As a matter of fact, when they had this guy Trujillo back in the 1930s, 40s, and 50s, when they had him in there, he was funded and backed by the U.S. Marines and the whole nine yards. So the U.S., they put puppet governments in the Dominican Republic. And the Dominicans, they've always had this colorism, colorism thing where you have jet black people who don't want to identify with being black. A lot of them identify with identify themselves as white. They identify more with Spain. And I've been to the Dominican Republic. I've seen this firsthand, by the way. I've been there. I've seen it. And what they have going on now, they've been planning and plotting a way to racially cleanse all of the dark-skinned people who are supposed to be of Haitian descent. And they pulled a whammy-bammy out the back of their ass. What they did, they said, well, look, people, even if you're born in the Dominican Republic, if you have Haitian descent, we can get you up out of this country. If you are, even if you're born on Dominican land, if you do, if, even if you're born in the country, even if you've been here for generations, even if your mama was born here and her mama was born here, if we know, if we see that you have some Haitian descent, you're going to have to prove that you're a citizen because now we've retroactively made it so that you're not a citizen if you have Haitian descent. They did some old throwback whammy bammy law that they threw on the people saying, okay, now you ain't really citizens. So now you got to prove your citizenship if you look like you're a Haitian. This is what the deal is. It. This is what the deal is right now. The media, they keep saying, well, they're trying to get rid of the Haitians. They're not trying to get rid of Haitians. What they're trying to do is get rid of people who were born in the Dominican Republic, who are basically black Dominicans. They're trying to say, OK, look, you black as hell, blacker than some of these other people. So you must be Haitian. So now you got to get the right paperwork in, in order to stay here now because you're not really a citizen. And what they do, they make the paperwork deliberately difficult to get a hold of because a lot of people don't have birth certificates who stay in the rural areas out there so now you're going to have hundreds of thousands of people who are basically stateless because a lot of these people who are actually Dominican they keep in the media saying that they're Haitian so they can't really go back to Haiti because they're not Haiti's, Haitian citizens they, they weren't born in Haiti they were not born in Haiti so they're not they're not Haitian citizens. So Haiti is like, wait, why are y'all sending all these people over here? They're not, we don't, they weren't born here. So now they're basically non-citizen state, stateless people. And they got like concentration camps set up. And this shit is going down right now. And what happened, they're doing it real swift. They just announced it real fast. Like, hey, in about a week, all you people, if you don't have the right paperwork, you're going to have to get the hell up out of here. And basically, they're targeting dark-skinned Dominican people, 
Haitian is the code word. Again, they use the white supremacist code word. Haitian is just a code word for dark black. Haitian is a code word because they know using the UN charter where you can't use a person's race to target them, they're going to pretend they're targeting targeting people based on their nationality, but nationality-wise, the people they're targeting are not Haitian. So what, what the hell do they keep saying Haitian for? They keep saying Haitian as a code word for black. It's some real slick shit that's going on. So when people say, hey, man, the, the Haitians got to go. These are not Haitians. These are dark-skinned Dominicans. Always remember that. They're going to try to be deceptive. If you see the footage talking about they're trying to get the Haitian immigrants out, they're not Haitian immigrants. They are dark-skinned Dominicans who were born in the Dominican Republic. That's basically the same thing as saying, hey, look, black person, you got to go, man. Yeah, you're going to have to go back to Ghana. You're like, what? I've never been to Ghana. Yeah, but you you, you haven't proven you're a citizen. But I, I was born here. No, I mean, you know, you, you were born here, but that don't mean you're a citizen. Your mama wasn't a citizen and your grandma wasn't a citizen, but but I was born here. No, you, you got to show us the right paperwork showing that your, your grandparents were citizens. And if you can't show that, go stand in that long line that's a mile long and try to get to the front of the line by the deadline which is tomorrow at 7 o'clock and if you don't meet the deadline well, we're going to have to put you in the um, the welcoming centers slash concentration camps until we figure out what to do with you that's exactly what's happening in the Dominican Republic right now it's some crazy genocidal concentration camp Nazi shit that's going on right now and the media is quiet as hell about it. Some people in the chat room are saying the same thing. They do that to us now as a matter of fact. See, black folks, the reason this is so important, we have to understand this. What they're doing to the people in the Dominican Republic, they can start doing the same thing to us. Right here in the United States, they can start doing the same thing to black people because technically they got all types of Supreme Court rulings to say that we're not citizens. They can just use the Dred Scott decision that nobody likes to talk about that says a black man has no rights that a white man is bound to respect. And I don't I don't know if the Dred Scott decision was overturned ever. So they can use the same laws on us. This is why what they do, they use the Constitution and then they criminalize us. Because they use the clause in the Constitution saying that you're a citizen and you're not a slave unless you you're convicted of a crime. So they have to they have to criminalize everything we do. That's why they got all these old arbitrary laws around the country that only seems to affect black people. They got like no sagging laws where you, you sag your pants, you go to jail, or you get a fine. They had stop and frisk where they basically just walked up to you and criminalize you. Hey, you fit the profile. Let me pat you down. Or they can just walk up to you and say, hey, we got a call that you were doing something suspicious. See, everything a black person does can be criminalized. Well, you have on a color purple. So that's you're part of the Grape Street Crips. That's a gang color you have on. So they find different ways to criminalize us. This is why they get black people and put them in Rikers Island. There's so many cases of black folks going to Rikers Island for years and never being charged with anything. You got people going to jail for years and not being charged. And they got to sit in jail until a court date and they set the court date whenever. So you're sitting up here warehoused in jail for nothing. And your life is being destroyed. We got to understand how white supremacy works, man. This thing is real heavy. And again, some of y'all, there was some Dominicans arguing with me, talking about, oh, you don't know the facts. You're spreading misinformation. I'm like, shut your little self-hating ass up. Any so-called Dominican person who says, I don't know the facts, shut your little self-hating ass up. You ain't white. So y'all come over here, y'all fake the funk around us, but when y'all look at their licenses, they have white on their license. They try to identify with the white supremacists. 
and some people trying to argue with me talking about this ain't race based it's about immigration it is not about no immigration this is all about race the people there are not immigrants you they were born on that land they're not immigrants Haiti has always had this racial thing going on where brown people are pitted against darker people that self-hate thing that was put into the minds of people there collectively by the white supremacists Trujillo one of the dictators there in the Dominican Republic back in the 1930s and 40s where he killed thousands in a short period of time too that man ordered the murder of thousands of dark-skinned Haitians they had what was called the Parsley Massacre and I talked about that on my show before Again, they wanted to get rid of the blacks by using the guys Haitian. Under the guise of Haitian, they murdered up to 30,000 people in five days. See, they do this shit and they do it real fast. When the shit goes down, it goes down fast. So by the time the UN gets involved and all these other people, the damage is done. So now people can play dumb after the fact. But they do this thing very fast. And Trujillo, they killed 30,000 people in less than a week. Trujillo, with his little self-hating ass, he was a Dominican Republic leader. His ass used to wear makeup in order to look lighter. Look that up. Trujillo, the dictator in Haiti, and not Haiti, in the Dominican Republic, his ass used to wear makeup in order to look whiter out there. Just like Sammy Sosa. Oh, look up Sammy Sosa. Y'all see what he did. Sammy Sosa was a dark-skinned black Dominican. That motherfucker looks like Ricky Ricardo right now. He done did all types of shit to his face and straightened his hair and put in eye contacts and shit. It goes deep out there, man. It goes real deep. But look at these very deceptive terms they use, like welcoming centers. That's real slick. That's a real deceptive term. See, the thing is, white supremacy, it's based on deception. They do things in a very deceptive manner. Those welcoming centers, those are nothing but concentration camps. Nothing more, nothing less. They're just concentration camps. You know, they they got the same thing in Cuba. They had the same thing in Cuba back in the 80s when when the Cuban refugees were there. They would have them in welcoming centers. And the Cubans had to literally riot to get up out of those welcoming centers. Go look at the movie Scarface. That's what that was about. They they were in those welcoming centers and they had to get about that life to get up out of there. But it's heavy, man. Let me get some calls from the family, man. The phone number is 818-850-5404. Let me see who's on the phone. What's up? Who's calling? What's up, Tariq? What's up? Who's this, man? What's up? It's Omar from Fort Lauderdale, Florida. Man, what's going on down in Florida, fam? Man, it's crazy, man. Just out here trying to get it, you know what I mean? No doubt. But I wanted to touch on the uh, Rachel Dolezal. Go ahead, man. Um, what do you think? You think she was like a hired agent from the dominant society to kind of keep us, uh, you know, racially charged of you know because of what's going on already in the news? What's your take on you know the whole Rachel situation? Yeah, man, you know, I talked about this on my Ustream show. I think that it's possible that Rachel could be an agent because the NAACP, they have had a history of having agents within the organization who would spy on black people. They've always had that going back to the 1920s because the NAACP was founded by white people. And they've also, and I talked about this Sunday, they've also had a history of putting in black people who could pass for white. Or right, people who right. claim black like, who pass so white. They had one gentleman named Walter you know, White in the 1930s. She obviously is a white woman. And then, you know, all of a sudden she's identifying herself as black. Right. But, you know, at the same time, you know, the, the whole situation of her adopting black kids and then the black kids kind of accepting her as, you know, so it just seemed weird. Like they pieced it all together in the media to kind of. That's what I'm saying. Brother. I'm trying to let, that's, what I'm, that, that's what I'm trying to say, brother. The NAACP, they've had a history. I'm just talking about them, which is a strange coincidence that they've always had 
these questionable, racially ambiguous black people heading or in key positions of the NAACP. They had Walter White, who was a, white, a black man who passed for white. They had a, a guy now, Ben Jealous, who's a black man who could pass for white. So I'm not shocked with this woman who's a so-called you know, a white person who's pretending to be black. Again, this person could have been in there to infiltrate, to get information, to get intel. So I don't put anything past these people. I, I know it's very deceptive. She didn't have to pretend to be a white person in order for black people to follow her. Because right. black people, we yeah. follow white people, anything they do. But again, we let our guards down when it comes to being around certain black people. So right, right. I'm thinking right. they probably, and this is my conjecture, I don't know how true it is, but they could have just had her play the black role so that other black people can let their hair down and let their guard down around her so they can get information about just anything about what's going on in the black community because I know she's part of that whole Black Lives Matter thing which I've told people that thing is backed by the white supremacists and it's it's farcical all the way from the top to the bottom but again uh, just, just she's a white supremacist a suspected white supremacist doing suspected white supremacist shit so I'm not sure exactly I, and, and that's what it boils down to man but uh, I appreciate the call and you know you, you have a good one man no doubt man thanks for the call okay I got somebody I want them to call they've been trying to call I got somebody in the Dominican Republic now I want my brother to call up now I'm waiting on him to call now he's gonna call now let me clear the phone lines because my brother he's out there in the Dominican Republic and he sent some pictures of some of those lines that's out there where people are lining up to get so called citizenship when they're already citizens they've already been born on that land so my man Tarak Sa I need you to call up brother if you're listening, let me get another call until you call up. What's up? Who's calling? Hey, three. This is Emmanuel again, calling from ATL. Hey, what's up, man? What's going on with you, Emmanuel? Man, you know, I'm getting really sick and tired of this Rachel Dozer thing because, you know, black people, what they don't understand and what you spoke about was that most white people actually like black people. But the way they operate is the system itself is systematic. So, you know, like Donald Sterling, how he gave money to the NAACP, Mark Cuban. Yet these people, they get caught saying slick shit about black people. And, you know, honestly, I really pity you because the 2015 coon train is going to be past cool. <laughs> like, I don't know. You're going to have to do the record because of the coon Dude, train. This, the coon train, if there's phone. an overboard on the yeah. coon train, there's no more seats left. I mean, everybody <laughs> jumped on the coon train <laughs> now, man. Good you Lord. Have to do the, the like, thank you for taking my call. Thank Thanks, you. Thanks, brother. Yo, I haven't done another coon train because hell, who ain't cooning at this point? All the coon train seats are filled. I mean, hell, when you turn on the TV, it becomes a coonathon. And that's the white supremacists. They know how to pick them. They got a whole Rolodex of coons. And not only that, well, back in the day, they used to have to have their little go to coons. Now you got people. Standing in line to coon. It, it's crazy right now. Okay, waiting on my brother to call up. Let me let me see if I can call him. My man is in the Dominican Republic. Let me see if I can call him real quickly because he said he's trying to call me. And the phone lines are tied up. So let me see if I can give him a buzz. Hold on. What country region? Hold on one second. Let me see. States. I'm trying to call him on Skype. Hold on one second. Okay, let me let me call him and see if it works. Oh, I think that was him just trying to call me. Hold on. Hello? Yo, yo. What's up, player? What's good, fam? What's up, man? Let's, tell everybody your name, fam. Cochise from Urban Kryptonite, man. Uh, my man's from Urban Kryptonite, my man Cochise. Now, you're down in the Dominican Republic right now, right, fam? No doubt. Yes, sir. In Porta so, Plata. So, you, you're, in, you're in Porta Plata? Yep. And are you from there? Well, your, your family there, from there? 
Yeah, part of my family is from here, but I was born in Detroit. But I still spend a lot of time here, you know, doing different doing different projects and stuff. But I'm a citizen here too, just like in the United States. So there you I got go. To do citizenship. Yeah. So I was explaining to everybody what the situation was down there. So if I got it right, they're targeting black people down there who are who were born in the Dominican Republic, but they're now saying that they're not, they're not citizens. Is that correct? Yeah, the, w w how it's going is if you came in after the something like 1930, 1920, if you came in, if your great, great, great grandmother came in and she came in illegally, they don't care if you were born here, you still got to go back because to them, you are illegal because your great, great grandmother was illegal. Now, some of them, they may let them slide, but others... You know, they just sending them back. Now, the problem with that is a lot of them don't have ties to Haiti. So you basically sending them back. To, it's like sending Mexicans back to Mexico who've been born in the United States. They've been in the United States since 1980 or 1970. They don't have anything in Mexico. Most of their family have moved to the United States. Right. So you set, you set them up for failure. Right. You, you getting people and basically not only moving them, you're sending them to a foreign land that they have no ties to. They don't know nobody. So you're sending people who are supposed to be citizens, but based on race, you're picking them and sending them to a foreign land they have no ties to. Absolutely. That's absolutely what. Let me let me give you a, a deeper perspective, though, from from both sides. What the Dominicans are saying is, look, you're devouring our resources because you've taken all the resources from your land and now you're coming over to this land so you're here illegally so you have to go so i don't know how much you guys know but allegedly not allegedly they did burn the dominican flag in haiti at the consulate so they had to close the dominican consulate down so that did not help now yeah. every day a couple of days out of the week at daha bone which is the border of the Dominican Republic and Haiti, there's a lot of transactions with avocados, different fruits, uh, meats, all of that kind of stuff. So a lot of the Haitians depend upon that. So once that consulate got closed, a lot of those transactions got closed. And that basically rose the tensions because allegedly the Haitian president did not do anything. Now the Haitians are saying, look, this is our shit here. This is our land anyway. Y'all took our land. That's what the Haitians are, are taught in school. That's what they're saying. So they like, well, kind of like the Mexicans are about Arizona and California. Well, this was ours anyway. So we really don't, we really should just be here. You really need to let us stay here anyway. So the Dominicans like, well, y'all taking jobs from us. Okay, so I may agree to do it for 500 pesos an hour. And you'll come in and say, you know what? I do it for 50 pesos. So a lot of the Haitians do a lot of the construction work here as well. So the Dominicans are also, you know, saying, look, you're taking the jobs too. So it's a lot of, it's a lot of uh, different dynamics. I did a video a long time ago called the Dominican Republic, the people of color that say they're not black. Right. I've got about 350,000 views and people was mad because of this whole race thing, which has a lot to do with what's going on now. Many of the Dominicans, they'll, they'll say they're from Spain before they were Africa. Any day. Yeah. I'm Spanish and Taino Indian. I'm like, get your ass out of here. You're not, you, you darker than me talking about you Taino Indian in Spain. You go to Spain, they don't want to hear none of that. Exactly. They don't, they don't exactly. claim none of this, none of that. None of us like that over there. So exactly. And I've seen it. I've been to Spain and I've yeah. seen Dominicans in, in Spain be treated just like a second class citizen. Yeah, man. It's, it's so, and then they, you know, in the United States, what I'm trying to stress is they always say, well, you know what? We're not black. But a part of that, we're not black, has a lot to do with the Haitians. They want to separate from Haiti, but they also want to disassociate from the black American, but also get the benefits that the black American has paid for in the United States. Absolutely. So Absolutely. It's tricky, man. And I it's, try to tell them that, that ain't the way to go about it. Yeah, yeah, because there's some people hit me up. They were like, I'm Dominican, I'm in Miami, and you wrong. And they were, I'm like, look, man, 
The reason you over here is because black folks put in work with the civil rights. The reason why you can come over and chill. They weren't letting people over here until after the civil rights movement popped off. So I like to remind people of that when they get a little slick at the mouth about black Americans. Y'all asses would not be over here if it wasn't for us out there going toe to toe with the white supremacists. So always remember that. But so what's going on with those welcome centers and concentration camps out there in the Dominican Republic? Have you seen some of them? No, what I what I've seen right now, and I got some I got some more pics, man. What I got is there's a line right now today. Nobody's actually being sent back. So over the last few days, what you have is a long line of people in these different places saying, "Look, I need these visas. We need to get these visas as soon as possible." Here's the thing that nobody is really mentioning: they allow the Dominican government said, "We're gonna give you a year to a year and a half." to get your visa or to show that you are legal in this country. The other pe the caveat to that is somehow a lot of these Haitian papers got lost in the uh, records or whatever. So you but told deliberately, them that you they gonna, deliberately got lost because what happened, they they took a lot of the Dominicans, I mean the the, the, the well the black Dominicans who had Haitian descent, from what I understand, mm -hmm. they the, the government took their documents from them. They said, hey, y'all need to come down and show your documents and leave your documents with us. And they never gave them back to them. They never gave the documents back. So now these people don't have any documents, so a lot of them. And now they're asked out and now they got to stand in line for new documents. So they deliberately made it extremely difficult for them to show these documents. And that's an old trick. That's an old white supremacist trick. Yeah, man, it's it's you're basically saying, well, you didn't prove it. I gave you a year and a half. Right. But at the same time, you're like, well, how am I going to prove it when you're the one that controls the paperwork, the birth certificates, and all of this? I can't prove it if you've done whatever you've done to it. So now i got to scramble on the last day, which they'll start the deportations uh, tomorrow. But it's been long lines, uh, basically all day, heavily guarded, military, all of that, you name it. And um, wow. you know, the people, our people are not, they're not happy, man. You know, I could imagine, man. Yeah. Man, all right, man, wait, man, keep sending pictures, man. What's your website, brother, so people can go and check out your stuff? The website is uh, urbankryptonitefilms.com. African Roots Foreign Diseases is the uh, documentary uh, done by myself and brother Tahuti Ma'ara, who co executive produced the, the film, as well as the brother Saladin Asad, the director. So, Urban Kryptonite Films. Uh, dot com man we got some more stuff coming soon so i'm down here on the ground just gathering up different things man man keep us abreast on what's happening man let me know everything that's happening on twitter and instagram man so we can just let people know what's happening so we can stop being distracted and know what's going on with our brothers and sisters out here man all right no doubt fam thanks for the call brother yeah, man, that's real heavy, man. That weighs heavy on my heart seeing how they getting down, man. This is just some straight genocidal Nazi shit that they got going on right now, man. You know, and all of this stuff is going to go down heavy tomorrow, man. They, they're they going to start putting people in these welcome centers, quote unquote, a.k.a. concentration camps, because that's all they are, based on race. And they're hiding it behind paperwork and immigration and all of this bullshit, knowing that these people, based on certain areas of the country they live in, they don't really have documentation like that. Because a lot of people were not born in hospitals in certain rural areas. So you don't have the proper documentation. For example, even here, my my son Asir, my, my youngest son, he wasn't born in a hospital. And I think in, now seeing this, how they getting down out here with the people in the Dominican Republic, when you have a home birth, me and my wife, they made it very difficult for us to get a birth certificate for our son. It took us a long time to get a birth certificate birth certificate for our son. If you have a home birth, they make you wait a few months to get the birth certificate. You got to set up an appointment to get the birth certificate. Whereas in the hospital, you get the birth certificate like in a day. You get it like damn near right away. You get it very quickly. But when you have a home birth, when you don't give birth in a hospital, they make you wait a few months. You got to go through a whole hoopla to get the birth certificate and the social security card and the whole nine yards. That's why we're still waiting on our son's social security card now because we want to get him a passport so we can travel and all that stuff. So they make it very difficult if you 
give birth at home. You're not giving birth in a hospital where they can document your ass right then and there. It's real deep, man. It's real heavy. Let me get a couple of more calls before I get out of here, fam. What's up? Who's calling? Hey, what's going on, Tyreek? This is Marcus uh, from North Carolina. North Carolina, man. Right out there in your area, you heard about the church shooting out there tonight? Yeah, man. It's crazy out there. I'm actually in uh, Orlando, uh, Florida tonight, man. I'm doing okay. some business down here. Oh, right, what's on your mind, fam? Uh, nothing much, man. I'm actually uh, just kind of calling in, but I, I had a quick question. Go ahead, fam. Uh, uh, with the uh, with uh, dating, you know, just outside of your race, why does why does why does it always seem that you know black men always have trouble with the sisters? You know, even when you give them an opportunity, you know, just to you know say, hey, what's up? How you doing? It's always that attitude. You know what I mean? It's almost like they want to chase you to somebody else. Well, you know, we have black people because of the system of white supremacy. Black men and women have problems with each other because black women have the same problems with black men. You get a lot of cooperation, but, you know, a lot of brothers don't deal with black women the same way they deal with black or white women. So there's complaints on both sides. See, brothers, when you get with a white woman, a lot of brothers, you know, it's like she's whatever. I can do anything with her or whatever. Talk to her any kind of way, treat her any kind of way. But when these same brothers get with a, with a white chick, Oh, they roll out the red carpet. These niggas get real, real romantic. They start opening <laughs> car doors. These niggas dress better. These niggas start reading books. They start getting on their goddamn P's and Q's when they get a white woman. So exactly. we, we got to look at the whole dynamic on both sides. When and, and black women and black men, when they date interracially, they act different. When white when black women date brothers, you get a lot of sass and a lot of shit talking, but these same black women, when they start dating white dudes, that sass goes away. They don't do exactly. all that sassy talk. You exactly. did? Exactly. So, uh, yeah, so, uh, you know, I, I recently, you know, uh, took this, uh, you know, Caucasian female out. You know, it was just kind of a friendly thing, and I mean, it was just a whole different experience, my brother. It was, you know, I, I was a little late to the movies, you know, probably a couple minutes. She was already in line. She got tickets. I said, no, I got it. She was like, don't worry about it. You know, I got the door for her. You know, we went out for ice cream. You know, I had a great conversation. But it's like, you know, if I had the same situation with a black female, it's like, why are you late? Why are you, why are you late? You know, or, you know, I'm not paying for this. You know what? Or, are we going to split this tonight or what? And I'm so, just like. So how was the date with the white girl? People? So did you, how was the date? Oh, it was cool. You know, we chopped it up. We talked. I mean, you know, we talked about, you know, educational backgrounds, you know, you know, where we're going in life, you know, generational wealth, different things like that, you know, where we see ourselves in five years. And it's almost like, honestly, it's really hard for me to have that conversation with a black female, you know, because they're like, they don't know what they're going to do. And I, I like, seriously, I mean, I've been traveling and it's like, you know, I don't know if I'm just, if I create that energy and they're coming to, to me. But it just seems like that same situation with most of the ones I feel like I, I see or I date. So did did y'all have a second date after that? It sounded like you really liked oh, yeah. it. Yeah, we yeah we had yeah we had a second date. You know, more the first one was kind of just a meet up. You know, just to talk. You know, go out for coffee. Went went to a movie, and then the second date was kind of like you know, okay, let's go out to dinner and talk. You know, you know, I got the Brian McKnight in the background for you, my dude. <laughs> nigga She had your heart, nigga She had your heart and hello, nigga Dude <laughs> I can hear the love in your heart, brother Nah, 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 nah. She's really cool I mean, we're, we're really just good friends I mean, like I, I really just, you know uh, Someone was just like Hey, you should talk to her She's cool But it, it's, I, don't, I don't know if it's gonna be romantic Or anything like that But it's just a whole different <laughs> experience it's just a whole different experience, period, you know? There you go. And um, I recently, I mean, I've, I've never really dated outside of my race. You know, and the last black girl that I dated, you know, she was like, oh, you're, you treat me like a jump off and you treat me like this. And I have a job where, you know, I work at a hospital and if I got to go, I got to go. You know, that means an emergency happening. So that means I got to go in. Right. And she's just like, oh, you know, you, you're not telling me where you're going. I'm like, you know, I'm on call. You know, I, I, I got to go. You know, this patient, you know, is dying. I got to go in and check out what's going on. Or, you know, like, you know, we would have sex. And, you know, then she would just be like, oh, you know, uh, you're, you're being real rough with me. Like, why? Do you, 
you 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 just want to fuck the shit out of me. Excuse yeah. my language. <laughs> you know, and, 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 you know, I'm just like I, I don't get what you're saying, and and then it's just like that bad energy from other relationships. I feel like it's kind of crazy. And that's because and of I, white supremacy, man. The systematic white supremacy. They put us in a position where black men and black women we are dysfunctional towards each other because we see ourselves through the eyes of the white supremacists. So there's a lot of distrust. There's a lot of vitriol that's put there and we act out and lash out against each other. So that's a thing that we got to work on. That's why we got to get that, that code of conduct with each other. All right, but I'm going to talk about that a little bit more. Thanks for the call, fam. Uh, I appreciate you, man. Love what you do. No doubt, man. Oh, my nigga was in love. But yeah, man, it's very funny how the white supremacists, they will create a certain dynamic with us socially. And Neely Fuller talks about this. He talks about how we black people, we become very poisonous with each other. We become very poisonous with each other in our relationships. And when we deal with each other, it's very dysfunctional, but we do not have those. We'll let those dysfunctions go when we deal with other people. Now, the way that brother described dealing with that white woman, he was on his P's and Q's, just like black women, when they date white men, they're on their P's and Q's. But we have this thing where we don't value each other, so we'll often try to tear each other down. Y'all see the stuff that's going on with Brother Umar right now. And I talked about this on Sunday. There was a situation where Brother Umar Johnson... He's a single brother. He, he met some woman who, you know, she was a fake hotep chick. You know, she had the herbal tea, um, kundalini hat, kente cloth, shea butter shit going on when he met her. Then later on, after he smashed, found out she was a stripper. And I think he still smashed because it's like, whatever. And then she so-called tried to out him by putting out their text messages that they had between each other, which weren't. You know, there was nothing to out. He was basically, hey, let's meet up. Let's hook back up. You know, I want to make love to you, whatever. So it wasn't nothing bad, but they're trying to make some kind of scandal out of it. But that just goes to show the kind of poison that we have. Even so-called conscious people who are supposed to be conscious. And I've talked about this. Watch out for these fake hotel chicks who sit up and walk around with the Egyptian musk oil and the onk. And the Ayala Van Zant books in their backpack and all that old bullshit, they be ratchet as hell. I've talked about people playing the whole fake hotel role, men and women. So now this chick is just going on and on making videos. See, she's an old ho, she's like a 40 plus year old stripper, she's still stripping, just real ratchet. Trying to out somebody for having sex with her because she's a stripper, just real, real unnecessary ratchetness just doing shit just for the sake of doing it and you gotta watch out for these people family because we, we we fake the funk with each other and people will use consciousness to hide their real deeds like this chick man they, they'll be ratchet as hell one week and now all of a sudden they holier than thou when you meet them you understand, you, you meet a chick, you call her house or you call her voicemail, you call her a week, a two weeks from now, two weeks ago, you hear this on a voicemail. She's real ratchet. You hear this shit. You meet her, you call up and try to hook up with her. You hear this on a voicemail. Hey, this is Lisa. I'm not here right now. But you leave your name, leave your number. Lick my pussy. And I'll call you right back if I still get my pussy back. Lick my pussy and my crack. And y'all have a good day, y'all. Don't forget my birthday is Thursday. So y'all meet me at the club. Leave your name so I can put you on the guest list. Now you have that. Now one week she's doing that. Now she go to a lecture and then you try to get at her on some real shit. Then she change up, you call her phone and then you hear this. Praise the Lord. This is Lisa. Please leave a message and give honor to God. And I'm going to call you back after I get through praising the Lord. 
Have a blessed day. And they be ratchet as damn hell. Fake as hell. Faking the damn funk. And y'all niggas be going for that, man. They be flip-flopping on niggas all the time. So y'all stop going for the fake kundalini energy chicks, man. Just because they got on a kente cloth and an Erica Badu head wrap, that don't mean they're on some holier-than-thou shit, man. They have ratchet backgrounds like all of the other ratchets out here, man. So stop going for the okey-doke, fam. Anyway, y'all, that's been today's episode of the Tariq Elite Radio Show. Don't forget, go to get tickets to join me live at TariqLive.com. 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 Also, go to TariqElite.com to get those fresh fly t-shirts, those melanin t-shirts that are still on sale. Go to HiddenColorsFilm.com to get Hidden Colors 1, 2, and 3. Ladies and gentlemen, I will holler at you on this Sunday's Ustream. Peace.